Item potency is a property of an operation where performing the operation more than once has the same effect as performing it once. For example, setting a variable to 5 is item potent because setting it twice to 5 has the same effect as setting it once. But incrementing the variable is not item potent because performing the increment twice results in the variable going up by 2 rather than by 1. Item potent operations are important in many contexts when we want to perform an operation exactly once. If I visit a website and buy an item, and I hit the big pay and place order button to trigger the final payment, I would like to be charged exactly once and receive one item. But if I accidentally hit it twice, I might double charge myself, which is not great. The reason this matters is because ordering and being charged is a non-item potent operation. If I were doing something else like setting my profile picture, I could hit the upload button as many times as I want, knowing that double setting my profile picture has the same impact as setting it once. That's because setting your profile picture is item potent. In the same sense, mashing the walk button at a crosswalk over and over is fine because it's item potent, so hitting it more than once has the same impact as hitting it once. It just signals to the traffic light that you want to walk. But hitting the ticket button at a ticket dispenser over and over would not be good because it dispensed a lot of tickets. That is not item potent. Performing an operation exactly once becomes even trickier once we introduce network unreliability. This happens often when communicating between an app on a smartphone and a server because data coverage can be unreliable at times and a lot of people perform important transactions from their smartphones, which involves sending a message like an API call from the app to the server and receiving a response. In this video, we'll consider two kinds of network unreliability. That any message between the app and the server can be dropped, meaning lost forever, and that any message can be arbitrarily delayed, meaning it could arrive a minute or even an hour after it's sent. Let's say I hit the place order button on my phone to order something, and in the happy case, the app sends the request to a server for processing, and the server charges me and responds with, okay, transaction processed. But what happens when I hit place order, and the app sends the request to the server, but never receives a reply? How does the app know if the payment went through? Well, there are two possible scenarios. One is that the request was dropped on its way to the server, and the server never heard it. In this case, the payment hasn't gone through. And the other scenario is that the request made it to the server and the server processed the order, but the response was dropped on the way back to my phone. In this scenario, the payment has gone through. Of these scenarios, the request drops on its way to the server and the response drops on its way back to me, which one is true? The bad news is there's no way to know because they both look the same to my phone. Silence. At this point, all I know is that the payment has either not gone through or has gone through once. We call this situation at most once because the payment has happened at most one time. But we want to do better. We want our payment to happen exactly once. We could try improving on this by retrying requests. If we don't hear back from the server, we can send a request again if we don't hear back within a certain amount of time, called the timeout length. For example, if we don't hear back within 3 seconds, we could try again. There are three scenarios here, and as we just discussed, the app doesn't know which is true. First, if the original request never made it to the server, then retrying is safe and we won't get double charged. Second, if the server received our first request, but the response was lost, retrying could cause a double charge. Third, maybe the request was delayed instead of dropped. Remember that the network can arbitrarily delay communication between the app and the server, so we might hit the timeout, retry the request, and then the original request shows up which could also result in a double charge. On the whole, if we retry the request until we receive a response from the server, we will eventually get a definitively finished response at the cost of potentially executing the request multiple times. We call this situation at least once because the payment will go through one or more times in contrast to what we had earlier, which was at most once. The benefit of retrying is that we will eventually get through and make the payment but we might have arbitrarily large numbers of duplicate transactions, which is really bad. Is there a solution? Take a look at the title of this video and remember what item potency is. It's the property where applying an operation more than once has the same impact as applying it just once. So, if we retry an item potent request, it will execute its effects at least once because we are retrying, but since applying its effects multiple times is the same as applying its effects once, then the net result is that it will execute its effects exactly once. In other words, to apply an effect exactly once, convert it into an item potent operation, 
and retry it until you hear back from the server that it went through. If it's already unimpotent, congratulations, retrying is always safe. The last piece of the puzzle is, how do we turn a non-idempotent operation into an idempotent operation? In our case, if the app makes an initial request and later some follow-up requests from retrying, we want the server to discard duplicate requests so that between the initial request and the retry requests, the effect only happens once. To do this, it needs a way to know which requests are duplicates of each other. We can add an app-generated request ID to every request, which will help the server identify duplicate requests. When a request hits the server, it first checks to see if it's seen the request ID before. If not, it handles the request normally and remembers the request ID. Later, if it encounters a request with an ID it's seen before, it can skip the work for the request, thus avoiding double charging. That way, multiple requests with the same ID have the same effect as a single request with the same ID, which means that it's become idempotent. Note that the request ID needs to be the same across the initial request and all retry requests, so that they can all be grouped together. You can think of the request ID as representing the user's intention to perform a payment. Each unique user intention results in a single request ID, shared by one or more network requests. In this scenario, I only intend to make a single payment, and therefore there is one unique request ID shared by one or more network requests. If I wanted to make a second payment, the network requests for that payment would share a different request ID. To sum up, it's tricky to perform an operation exactly once, especially when network failures are in the way between an app and a server. If you try once and don't hear back, you don't know if it actually went through or not, and thus you have an at most once situation. If you retry until you do hear back, it will go through eventually, but there might be duplicates, which is at least once. Conveniently, an idempotent operation is one where applying it multiple times is the same as applying it once. Therefore, if we retry an idempotent operation until we hear back, it will take effect exactly once. And to convert a non-idempotent operation into an idempotent operation, generate a request ID on the app side, attach it to the initial request and all retries of that request, and on the server side, use it to filter out duplicates so the request takes effect only once. As an appendix, let's talk about an alternate, commonly proposed but ultimately flawed way to make requests happen exactly once. This is making a request, then querying the server to see if the request went through. If it hasn't gone through, then retry. The issue with this is that requests can be arbitrarily delayed by the network. Therefore, you could issue a request, check the server, hear that the request hasn't yet been received, and resend the request. But then the original request shows up, and you end up doubling the request. So don't use this method, and instead use the ID generation method we just discussed.